Good morning. Welcome to the FTS Bet Slip on Monday, the 5th of April. Um, hope you're all well. It's going to be a bit of a shorter one. This uh, I've been feeling great this weekend, uh, hopefully on the mend, but it's just feeling a bit under the weather. Um, I have made a video this morning which sort of sits in with the mindset stuff. It's actually just looking at a method um, from the podcast I did on the 30th of March where I talked about one nil half time two ahead. Um, I've put a video on the website, so if you go to FTS blog, you'll see that it's video half time walkthrough, uh, about thirty minutes long. Um, I think if you're into football trading, you'll you'll get something out of it, and it will make you enjoy it and look at it hopefully. But um, if you don't, sod you. Uh, I don't want a load of nitpicking and that. Just I'll just ignore you, block you, sod you off. It's um, not in the mood for nonsense like that. But it just I do think it. it I've literally because I wasn't feeling great this weekend. I did exactly what I say to you guys. I thought I'm just going to do one method, sit and hope to make you some videos. Went a bit pear shaped, but I've ended up making one video collating everything together, um, which hopefully you guys enjoy. So that's the sort of start of one part of Mindset Monday, in effect, just looking at, at that and seeing. I'll talk you through some trades. Um, hope you've all had a good Easter, good weekend. Um, Spurs ruined mine, and you see in the video, they've ruined mine for money as well. Um, absolute garbage aren't they absolute garbage i think there's spurs fans who think that getting jose out and another manager in will miraculously make people like davis and sanchez be able to play football they are dreadful that back that back line it's the worst i've ever seen at spurs and we've seen some garbage they are just rubbish um and uh united today i've got people coming i, I saw something yesterday out there that um, you look at Sub. I mean, I dug Solskjaer out, and I still don't think he's the man that's going to get them competing with Pep. But you look at United's record over the last twelve months. The old myth, Pochettino, everybody wants. He's lost more games since he's been at PSG in the league than Ollie's lost in a year. Um, and I've got people telling me that Brighton coach is better than United. Do me a favour. Do me a do me a favour. Honestly, go and go and give your head a wobble, son. Um, you know who you are. Go and give your head a wobble. We're gonna have fucking words in the summer when we meet for a beer. Um, Brighton shit. Told you, lay Brighton. Got a couple of lucky wins and away they go. Uh, Villa good win yesterday. Southampton come back, good win. So I think the pod bets did all right, didn't they? Um, I want to talk a bit about staking today. For, as I say, it's going to be a bit shorter one, but I want to talk a bit about staking. When I first started on um, dealing with the public, a guy who taught me, a guy I've talked about certainly in the early days, the horse racing guys all know him, a guy called JG, Jimmy Gregor. Um, he he is a multi-millionaire professional gambler. That's an absolute fact, whether people want to believe it or not. You know, made his money years back. You know, when Betfair and things weren't really about, and the horse racing markets and inside info, um, back in horses at thirty-three to one in the morning that were going off at four to one and winning. Um, in a military operation, still the operation still goes now that he was the sort of founder of the guy still going out doing all the shops and you know the guy I talk about the train story and shutting the boot he he's involved in that now um, and I met him through that setup but when I first started dealing with the public I sort of I, I, I trained on my own board that was sort of the embryo of the website starting just started as a, a one off one page thing certainly never had any plans to do this like this um and uh the guy who this guy uh jg who was sort of mentoring me he thought i was mad doing it and he said the one thing you must never get involved in is telling people what to bet and i think he's absolutely right and i've i've vied away from it all the time i hate it with a passion i hate i hate saying to somebody do 75 points or do 50 points because they come back then and it's your fault well, you said, you said, and that's the danger when money's involved. So it's never something I've been keen on, um, but I'm well aware it is an area that people get horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. Um, and, and that's the danger. And all the things that come around that with wanting to win quicks, so a staking too big, um, 
looking at exactly what has happened previous and thinking well nothing like that can happen or that's as bad as it can get when clearly there's times when it can't so all those sort of things the preparation the acceptance that if you just start and get consistency is the key to this game and and hopefully the video i show you you know there's no there's no huge risk to it while there's you know two three hundred four hundred pounds involved there's it's not massive risk all the time um so so managing that sort of side of it i'm well aware is is something that people get horribly wrong and and i've talked about it in in earlier ones of these talking about you know being bomb proof being set up the, the one of the keys to winning at this game genuinely is staying in the game that is that is the one of the things if people look back to me and say things you're proud of obviously i'm proud of my kids um I'm proud of never missing a mortgage payment when I didn't have a lot of money. You know, I always found the money to pay the mortgage, this, that and the other. Uh, but one of my biggest prides in gambling, it's not just the winning, it's the fact that I've stayed in the game and I'm the longevity of it. Um, and I've changed what I do and, and kept going. Um, and I've had shit times, good times, great times, fantastic times. But, you know, we'll all have that. Um, but to try and keep that sort of level headedness and stay in the game and a lot of that is down to how I set my bank up and my attitude to risk and, and you know we talked earlier in the year when people were losing 20, 30, 40 grand in a week that's not how I set myself up you know October 2019 was it when I came back from Japan that was still one of the worst runs I had there when I'd done 20 grand in a month um so it can happen of course but I, I tend not to bet in a way that that's going to happen for me um, and that's just experience and learning it but you need to set yourself up um, properly and and I just I'm, one of the things I'm really cautious of at the minute and I, I should have elaborated a bit more thinking back in this video really is people's wish and desire to do this do everything on auto do it as easily as possible um, but in order for that to work properly, it needs to be fully systemized and system and and your experience over time tells you that systems do need tweaking systems do go wrong i 'm going to talk about that but people um you know that 's what people want this this real sort of push button setup where it, almost any thinking or any work themselves is completely removed. And I can just do that. Now that's that's probably what people want from me now. Can we just do this and that's it and make a load of money? Um, and whether it's from me or other people, I think that's it. Um, in my, I want you know, in that video, I talk. That's my own bets. I show and I'm talking about. Uh, so in staking, I wanted to talk about a couple of things that I do with staking. One is obviously having a bank that is fully bomb proof and setting myself up, and I'm happy to start small. Um, and I've shown how I took 500 quid and turned it into 37 and a half grand. And in that, I had a year that didn't do anything, you know, and did it in three years. So you get these sort of spurts in your bank and then you get those periods when it sits still. Again, people want that regular monthly income and all that. Um, and I can control a lot more what I do now and how I earn my money just because I've got a, a quite a diverse range of things I do but when you're starting out and you just want to do one or two things you've got to have that acceptance and that bomb proof set up and say right that's it and I'm going to fucking stick at it and I'm set up to be able to stick at it and then when that takes some profit wins some profit take some out of that and put it over there but another thing I do um, and again a couple of those you've done zooms with me will I've shown you this um, is You've got to understand how your own betting works and again it's it's doing that little bit extra work that more so let's let's assume that we're back in over two and a half goals i'm just i'm just making this up off the top of my head as i'm talking to you let's just assume we're back in over two and a half goals um and we can work out our average price and everything is 2.0 whatever it may be um, we can work out our hit rate we can work out our yield we can do all these things roi all that we can do and we can say right i'm going to bet 100 pound at that but your selections in your system don't range from 2.0 to 2.0 it's never going to happen. So you might have a betting system where you're betting over two and a half goals between 1.8 and 2.2 .2, and your average price is two. 
what I can tell you, and 100% is going to happen, anything under 2, from one point, so the bets you're having from 1.8 to 2, will be winning more often than the bets that are 2 to 2.2. I've never met anybody disprove me yet. I'm not saying that somebody won't, but you know, people could make something up. But the lower odds win. That's why they're lower odds. They win more often. That's what happens. A 1.3 shot wins more often than a 4.0 shot. That is what happens. So you could have a whole system there, 1.8 to 2.2. So I want over two and a half goals in Germany. Home favourite must be 1.8 and under. Uh whatever, you might have a goal expectancy of 2.5 and above, and I'm going to back over two and a half goals every game that qualifies in that, but only if they're between 1.8 and 2.2. And you go on one day and bon Borussia Mönchengladbach are 1.8 and Augsburg is game is 2.2. So you've got the complete two ends of the spectrum and you're going to have a £100 on each one. I don't do that. I have more money on the bets that win more often and less money on the bets that don't win that often. And enabling me to do that, what it does, it doesn't necessarily win me more money. What it does, though, it smooths my graph because I'm having more winners on these 1.8 to 2 bets and I'm having less winners there on the 2 to 2.2. So the more winners having a little bit more on, it smooths my graph out. So... It's something, you know, maybe down the road, I'm, I'm, you know, down the road for people to consider something to look at. Um, I've got a sheet I built to do it. It's, um, you know, in, in basic, simple terms, let's say we wanted our bet to be £100. So, so I want my risk to be um, generally in the area of £100. That's, you know, that's it. I would do something like have... 110 and 115 on the 1.8s to 2s and I'll have 80, 85 to 90 on the 2, 2.0. I've got a sheet where I plug my numbers in and my edge on the system and everything and it tells me. Um, but just as a rule of thumb for you guys, if you go back and break your system down and, and other people, well, why don't you just have a system 1.8 to 2 and 2 to 2 point? You could do that, but it means two separate banks. This, that. this is actually quite a smooth way to bet, to smooth out your curve without messing anything up, really. So if you've got a system there, whatever it may be, go and check, lay the draw, and you might have, I'm laying the draw from four to, to six, and have a look. How many bets do you win between four to five? How many bets do you win between five and six? And, and adjust your stakes accordingly. Have a little bit more on the ones you win more, a little bit less on the ones that lose more. Adjust it so that, on average, you're betting your 100 quid. Um, but what you'll find it does is it smooths your curve. Again, this is something I may make a video on in the summer um, if I get time. But it's just an area that, that you can look at. Um, you know, and, and you could break it down into more minutiae detail if you wanted to you could go 1.3 to 1.41 but i tend to i tend to just operate in bracket but i've got a as i say i've just got a sheet i plug the odds that are available in and it says and i put in a base stake whatever 500 and it says right ian this one's that it's winning more often you have 600 on this one only have 420 on that one um so when the 600 wins because they're winning more often and the 420s are losing it smooths that curve out so my graph doesn't have these so much peaks and troughs it has a more smoothing effect on your graph so you know i, I can bang on all day about um bank size setting up this that and the other this is more a bit a little bit about how you bet not what you bet it's more how you bet Get once you've got yourself set up, once you've got your bank, actually look at the breakdown of that system and how it wins. And you, as I say, you don't need to rip it apart and go to every single one. But generally, if you take a betting system that's between an odds range, I will almost certainly stand here and say the lower end of that range is winning more often. The higher end isn't. Just change your stakes accordingly. A little bit more there, a little bit less there won't make a massive difference to your bottom line and it will smooth out that um it will smooth out that graph of course there'll be ones that win at 
2.2 we go oh, I wish I had 100 on but it actually over time I found it quite beneficial my it's my my way don't have to do it you don't need I don't need lectures on it why do you do that I'm just purely again using this to share something with you that you may want to look at that makes life a little bit easier you know you, you see people using Kelly and this that and the other I just like this method of um, it's fairly simple to operate doesn't you know doesn't involve me risking massive amounts in my bank it's fairly simple to operate that's that that's that bang whack it in um so yes yeah, so you do need obviously to be all set up and have everything um bulletproof banks this that and the other but another area to smooth those downturns smooth those curves is um with a little bit of variance in your stake having a little bit more on the ones that win more often which invariably will be the lower rod ends and having a little bit less on the higher rods um, particularly if you get going it, it's it's just a nice way to not put yourself through any angst I'm a, I'm a man against angst these days um, as you tell I'm a chilled relaxed guy um, right I hope you've had a, all had a good Easter so you've got 16 minutes here do go and watch the video it's on the FTS blog um, so just go to the FTS website FTS blog it will be on the front page there you might want to bookmark it um, and watch that feel free to ask any questions and i'll try and help you um and um yeah obviously we got football running thick and fast today ultimate's been done today another one tomorrow um and we'll push on to the end of the season and spurs will still be shit have a lovely little easter monday enjoy yourselves hope you haven't eaten too much chocolate athletes like me don't touch it and i'll be back with you tomorrow for some stats and then wednesday thursday off <laughs>